Hello everybody. Um, I just got out of the shower and I'm in my pitching jams. Um, so I figured this would be a perfect time to talk about the conspiracy against the human race. <clears throat> so yesterday, I, um, it was actually earlier today, but, um, I misspoke and I said that, uh, we'll read the first chapter, the introduction in the first chapter of this. Um, what I didn't realize is that the way the first chapter is set up, it's set up to be like half the fucking book. And all of those sub-chapters that I was talking about aren't numbered in the paperback edition, even though they are numbered in the ebook edition. So, um, in the description below, I'm going to have, um, like, the reading schedule. And it's set up in days, but it's just like, day one is June 1st, day two is June 2nd, and vice versa, or etc., so, um, today we're just doing the introduction here, which is, um, of pessimism and paradox. <clears throat> and I'm not going to, like, beat you over the head with this, but what I want to talk about, I have some points here. So, like... There are a few things that Ligotti talks about in the beginning of this, and I think a lot of what he says here, because after this introduction, I'm, I don't want to say that this book gets super dark, but if you are not of a sound mind, okay, Dwayne Hoover, this might push you over the edge. So um, I just wanted to hit a couple points and talk about some of the things that are in this book. So, first off, this is um, a certain view on pessimism, um, the conspiracy against the human race. So, there will be a lot of him quoting other works and quoting other philosophers and stuff like that. So that's one thing. Um, the second thing is, is if you decide that pessimism is a route you want to take, there are certain things that you cannot do, which, um, one, you cannot debate pessimism because human fucking beings think way too highly of themselves to be um, throttled with any kind of pessimistic views. So, um, in debating pessimism, you're better off to just be fucking dead and not worry about it. Second, if you're seeking accolades from your peers, if you want, like, people to go, oh, that, that was brilliant, very, very good, um, you're never gonna get them, because people, um, think so much of themselves that they cannot fathom the fact that they are nothing, that they are meaningless, and that everything they do is, um, it basically is just a pile of shit, okay? Um, I'm super fucking paraphrasing the introduction to this book right now. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I want you to notice is how often Ligotti refers to the arts. He uses analogies of, like, the puppeteer or the puppets, and we're going to be hearing a shit ton about that. So just strap yourself in, because there is going to be so much puppet talk in this book. And um, even in uh, Teatro Grotesco, there's, like, one of my favorite stories in there is about a puppet. But um, he also mentions plays and actors and characters. Um, this is really big with pessimistic philosophers, because a lot of pessimistic philosophers <sighs> allude to the fact that, not that you can get enlightenment, but that the arts creating, um, bearing your soul 
is kind of the closest way you can achieve these things. So the arts are a really big deal, at least in my view, to pessimistic philosophy. And with that said, I really think that this book and Thomas Ligotti is writing this mainly to creators. He's writing this to artists of all kinds. Um, and there's even a sense in this introduction. And the facade of this will drop once we get into the main meat of the book. But there's a part of me that believes that this whole book is almost like bullshit. Like, and Ligotti's like, look, this is bullshit. Like, everything in here is crap. And if you're going from a pessimistic point of view, yes, everything in here is meaningless and trite. But at the same time, as an artist, looking at the things that are in this book, um, you can actually derive a lot from it to create great things, if that makes sense. So um, that will be something that we get into. <clears throat> And even there's some like tongue in cheek shit in Teatro Grotesco that we will be talking about later in the month. Um, but a couple of the things that are like cornerstones of this work here um, are consciousness and the puppets. And we will talk about um, each of those as we go. But um, I just wanted to hit a couple points in here that I think are super relevant. Um, G.K. Chesterton, who was a British author and Christian apologist, said, You can only find truth with logic if you've already found truth without it. And the whole reason why this is said is to prove how irrelevant logic is and how um let me see or how irrelevant logic is to finding the truth um i think according to Ligotti here truth is um almost not an absolute <clears throat> and as we go farther um we're going to be hearing from other philosophers and I'm going to be bringing up some Camus shit that is going to um, help solidify points um, and also some Schopenhauer stuff that I am really on the fence about um, and we, we, we'll talk about that at a later date um, but uh, one little part here that is basically the uh, thesis of this whole work here. Um, for the time being, it need only be said that the philosopher in question made much of human existence as a tragedy that need not have been were it not for the intervention in our lives of a single calamitous event, the evolution of consciousness, the parent of all horrors. Um... Now, this will be, in the next few days, uh, kind of hitting you over the head. How consciousness um, in the human race is probably the biggest curse that um, any creature on the planet has ever faced. Um, and again... This gets really dark if you're not of sound mind. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So um, just be careful with that. Um, and then we start talking about puppets. So just as a introduction here. For a brief while, let us mull over some items of interest in regarding puppets. They are made by puppet makers and manipulated to behave in certain ways by a puppet master's will. The puppets under discussion 
here are those made in our image, though never with such fastidiousness that we would mistake them for human beings. If they were so created, their resemblance to our soft shapes would be a strange and awful thing, too strange and awful, in fact, to be countenanced without alarm. Um, and, again, this we will go so deep into. Um, so, just sit back for that. Um, but a lot of the stuff <clears throat> that we keep coming back and forth to, again, with the arts, um, and he will bring it up over and over again, is supernatural horror. And if you are um, a fan of H.P. Lovecraft and his essay, Supernatural Horror and Literature, that will also come up in this at a later time. Um, but all supernatural horror derives from what we believe should be and should be not. And should not be, I'm sorry. Um, so... A lot of what we're going to be talking about in here um, has that as kind of a backdrop. Like, what should be and what should not be. And um, dealing with our consciousness and the allegory of the puppets and things of that nature. So, um, hopefully you're enjoying this and, um, you're having a blast with it. And tomorrow we're going to be reading, um, our town manager, I think is what it's called. Or is it the town manager? It might be the town manager, the town manager, which is a really, really fun story. That's just, um, <clears throat> especially like, with how things have gone just in our lives the last couple of years, um, the parallels are fucking like mind blowing. So, um, hopefully you'll dig that. And I'm really sorry that I keep touching the desk and the desk is so flimsy under my heavy ass hand that, um, it keeps shaking my um, laptop. So um, let me know if you're participating in this because like most things I do, I half-ass it at the beginning and then like um, run it like a, I don't know, I, I would say a bunch of horrible things right now, but I run it pretty hard once we get going and most people don't even realize something's happening until we're almost done with it. So if you are participating in this, let me know down below and um, let me know what you're thinking about all this stuff. And if you don't know what the schedule of the reading is, it will be in the description below. So also Saturday, August 5th, I'm going to be doing a poetry reading and unveiling the new chat book. So, um, set a reminder for it. They're all over, um, so much so that YouTube said, you know what, we're not going to let you post anymore today because you're kind of going crazy. So, um, in the community tabs, however you get to those, um, you'll be able to find it and set a reminder, um, because that's going to be loads of fun. So I will talk to you later, guys. Good night and bye-bye.